time he left us visibly, he says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore. But you will see me. This has to be one of the great passages and promises and proclamations of peace from Christ. It's one of my favorite passages because it's so clear. I will not leave you as orphans. That is, Jesus addresses two things about our lives, fear and faith. And he addresses them in three simple solutions, with three simple solutions. Now, perhaps you didn't catch what those, the three simple solutions are in the Gospel of John 14 because Jesus starts backwards and goes then to the beginning. The three solutions are in Jesus' order, Pentecost, Ascension, and Easter. In our order, Easter, April 4th, Ascension, May 13th, and next Sunday, 23rd of May, Pentecost. So that's how we will preach it today. I will not leave you as orphans, and here are the three ways I'll make that real. Easter, Ascension, and Pentecost. Now everybody loves Christmas and they should, but it shouldn't come as a surprise that Ascension was the, the very first of the major Christian festivals um, on, the, on the earth celebrated by the Christian church in the second century. Well, think about it. Easter is every Sunday. Sundays are eat little Easter's. The coming of the Holy Spirit also occurs on Sundays through the words and sacraments of God in Christ. And so the ascension in the middle of the week, that was the cause for joy and celebration, even though the Lord left us in a visible way, but he, but he still remains. And so the Paschal candle was lighted all Easter, but after the Ascension Gospel is read, it is put out, but the candle remains. We don't see the flame, the candle is here. The, the, the flame and the smoke ascended on high. So Easter, Ascension, and Pentecost, Jesus says, first about Easter in John 14, I will come to you. So Jesus addresses first fear and then faith. Of course, the fear of death and crucifixion. Um, that was prevalent at Easter. Uh, the fear of anointing his body, the fear of the Roman soldiers, the the, the, the fear of they would be next to be crucified, the disciples. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. So Jesus, he went to them. Oh, I don't know if you, when you rise from the dead, where the first place you're going to go, want to go. I want to go to Disney World. Or I, I want to go to Hawaii. Or I want to go, you know, you're, you're, you're resurrected from the dead. The first place Jesus goes is to his friends, his disciples, his spiritual family. He doesn't go home to Nazareth. He goes to the locked room in Jerusalem. I will come to you. And he kept that promise and continues to keep it to all of us, even all these centuries later. Because I live, you will live, he said. 
And that's extremely uh, familiar verse to you, um, especially at a funeral, because it drives out fear, the fear of the permanency of death, and it builds faith. So Jesus uses Easter to drive out fear and to build faith. And the devil hates it, and our flesh rebels, and our mind argues. Because we feel quite comfortable, like in a pair of old slippers, when we're afraid. And when we doubt, we think we're smarter than everybody else. Because everybody has doubt. And Jesus drives those right away. Because I live, you will live. So he comes to us, and he says, you will see me. And, and that, of course, has happened. I will not leave you as orphans. So orphans, you know, tragically lose both parents, and they lose their love and, and the structure, the support structure, um, their, their beginning of life structure of, of mom and dad. And an orphan then as to fear, loneliness, and as to doubt his or her future. And Jesus addresses that today, even as he visibly leaves us, even before he left us on the tree of the cross. I will not leave you as orphans. So with the ascension, 40 days after Easter, he said, Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. By returning to heaven, Jesus is showing us that the kingdom of God is much more important than the kingdom of this life, of this world. The kingdom of heaven, forgiveness, faith, eternal life, is better than anything on earth which is why he ascended to God's right hand. Jesus wants you to tear off the blindfold of infatuations with the things of this world and to open your eyes of faith to the better things of the world without end. The Bible wants us to know these truths. Earth is only temporary and it's inferior to heaven. The Bible wants us to know this. If life doesn't show you it, yourself, you need to read the Bible about that. Earth is only temporary, and it's inferior to heaven. It's, it's good, but it's temporary and inferior, which is why Jesus ascended to heaven. So don't get too attached to this world. Don't find your greatest pleasures in front of you in this world. Your real home is in heaven. And even the best moments on earth can compare to the moments that lay ahead for all of you who believe being with Jesus in heaven. Heaven is eternal joy for Jesus and for us. Um, when he went to heaven, though, he didn't go there to take it easy. And, you know, I, I don't think when we go, um, we're not going to just go there to take it easy. Jesus has tons of work to do. Tons of work to do right now. Uh, different work from when he was on earth and his humiliation, you know, the, the growth pains and the the troubles and then the suffering, the, the, the hundred, the third temptation, and finally the crucifixion. So it's a different task. It's now an exalted task where the Bible says God placed all things under Christ's feet and appointed him to be head over everything for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills everything in every way. So can a pandemic stop Christ from his control over the world? No. Can family turmoil and strife? No. 
and the devil and forces of all evil? No. He is still in control. Let's talk about a job. Controlling all things for the good of the millions of Christians on the earth. Turning bad things into good for us. That's a daily task, 24-7 task that he is accomplishing even at this minute. So, though he was ridiculed from the rulers of the world, he is now receiving praise from saints and angels in heaven and from all of us ascension Christians on the earth today. And then Pentecost. He said, I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. Not a foster God. You know, I will not leave you as orphans. Thank God for foster parents. Thank you, Jesus. Orphans need them. But the Holy Spirit's not a foster God or a secondary God. I will give you another counselor. He is uh, the Holy God, equal to the Father and to the Son. The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you, which is where we benefit. I will not leave you with, as orphans. Well, where's the manual on that? Well, it's right here in the sacred scripture. I will teach you everything. You can write it down, and it will be preserved. It's right here in the sacraments. The sacraments instituted by Jesus. That's the work of God the Spirit. People always talk about being a spirit-driven Christian. All Christians are spirit-driven. Can't be a Christian without the counselor, the Holy Spirit. People talk about being a born-again Christian. All Christians are born again. Through the water and the word born into that better kingdom while we're still here on earth below. A kingdom of forgiveness and peace. Boy, there's lots of love in here to conquer fear. Remember that Easter Ascension and Pentecost drive out fear and doubt. Remove fear and doubt. There's tons of love here. Uh, Jesus says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Lots of love to conquer fear, lots of scripture to remove doubt. Note the Spirit's main job is to bring Jesus to us and to bring us to Jesus. That's his main job. That, that's what makes him most happy and pleased. Not earthquakes, not fire and brimstone, not sound of the wind, not little flames on our heads, not miraculous healing or handling snakes, but to bring Jesus to you and to bring you to Jesus. That's his task, his main task, and a spectacular job. He does it day by day. So, though fear and doubt might rule the roost in our world, might rule the roost in human lives, Jesus says, I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. Before long, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. But we do see you, Lord Christ, in three simple and familiar ways. Your Easter, your Ascension, and your Pentecost. Peace be with you and blessings during this time, this 50-day time of Easter and Ascension and Pentecostal joy. Amen. The peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. The Creed of the Church is found on page 2 of the liturgy, the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty.
offer up to God, our ascended Lord, our, a musical offertory, the offering plates are static and in the entryway of the church. You may be seated.